Hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, first lesson in your third week in the life of Christ at MDI. In the previous two weeks, I've had the uh, ministry video at the point of the third lesson in the week. But this week, I'm going to start out with it. In this video, I want to take a look at the Sermon on the Mount. It is primarily contained in uh, Matthew's Gospel in the 5th through the 7th chapters in their entirety. Although I believe Luke uh, makes mention of some of those sections and some of the things that Jesus said in his Gospel. There's been much said about this sermon by Jesus. I'm going to require that you read it all the way through. So make sure that you do that. When I took the life of Christ almost 40 years ago, we were required to memorize all three chapters in order to pass the class. Yes, it's that important. Now, uh, I'm not going to take a whole lot of time going through the entire uh, part uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount, but I am just simply going to say about it that I believe that it is a map to maturity for any individual who is seeking to be a kingdom person. Now, in this video, I am going to focus primarily on the first part of the sermon, which is commonly referred to as the Beatitudes. I believe, and I am going to teach you, that the Beatitudes fulfill two purposes in this sermon. Number one, they serve as an introductory outline for the sermon itself. And uh, number two, they are themselves a ladder to maturity or uh, a thermometer, uh, whichever analogy you feel like you want to use, by which you may gauge your spiritual life. I'm suggesting that they begin with the spiritual awakening of the individual and move methodically and progressively until they end with the ultimate display of maturity, that is, the individual being persecuted for their faith and perhaps giving up their life for Christ. Let's look briefly at each beatitude individually as they begin in Matthew, the fifth chapter. First, blessed are the poor in spirit, and as I just said a, a, a moment ago, this is the individual who has awakened spiritually to the truth that he or she is unable to meet their spiritual needs alone. They need God. This is the first step in faith, to acknowledge God and then to seek Him. Next, blessed are those who mourn. The individual is confronted with their spiritual bankruptcy and they mourn over their condition. Now, uh, from what I see in the rest of the Bible, this sounds a lot like repentance. So the individual, based upon that mourning, changes their lifestyle and their life's course, changes their mind, and seeks God. Next, blessed are the meek. Now, this word meek is not to be confused with uh, what is traditionally the cultural definition of meek or meekness. Uh, and that is weak or weakness. This word originally in the Greek language meant power under control. It was used of war horses that were controlled by the bit in the mouth. Now, I'm not suggesting that Jesus was teach, teaching baptism here, but isn't that exactly what baptism is? The person submitting themselves to God in a process that may or may not make sense to them at the time, bringing the individual will under the control of what God wants and submitting to it, and that that is the first time of many, many more times, perhaps innumerable number of times, where in the Christian life the individual must place himself under the control of God and deny self. Next, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Many times, baptism is followed by the immediate desire to know God's word and to put it into practice, to follow God uh, in the ways that he wants us uh, to follow him. After that, next, blessed are the merciful. Those who uh, put into practice uh, forgiving others whether that be family, friends, co-workers, whatever, uh, when they wrong you just as God forgave you. Next, blessed are the pure in heart. Now, let's look at this one closely because I think it's often misunderstood. 
The original word here means containing no alloys. And that's talk of uh, metals. In other words, uh, a metal is pure. It's pure gold. It's pure silver, etc. Uh, it is not a combination of metals. And so uh, we are to have a pure heart. It does not mean that I am sinless. What it does mean is that your purpose for service in the kingdom of God does not contain mixed motives. You don't come to church uh, because you want to be seen coming to church. You don't come to uh, uh, church for uh, uh, any other reason than that you are attending because of a sincere heart to honor Christ and to serve him. Next, blessed are the peacemakers. Now, a peacemaker is a person who takes two individuals who are at odds with one another and brings them together. Now, biblically, this is the work of an evangelist. A person who is a kingdom person, uh, when they reach a certain level of maturity, must reach the point where they're reaching out to other men and women and bringing them to Christ. And then the final beatitude, blessed are you when men persecute you, uh, hostility uh, toward those who follow Christ is inevitable. He said, there may be imprisonment or death if you're following him. Now, perhaps you can see the logical progression of these beatitudes that I am suggesting exists. Now, most of the rest of the sermon could be placed underneath one of these beatitudes. And one of the reasons that I want to point this out to you today is to give you the opportunity to have as much time as possible this week to perform the exercise that I'm about to give you. I want you to take the rest of the sermon and categorize the various sections under each beatitude. Now I'll do one for you as an example. Jesus says in the sixth chapter that the Pharisees love to fast so that they can be seen by others. I would place that one under the beatitude regarding being pure of heart because their motives for serving God are mixed. They're not doing it to receive the attention uh, of uh, the applause and attention of God. They're doing it to receive the applause and the attention of men. Now, when you do this assignment, I would like for you to place this in any format you desire. You may chart it. You may list it, whatever, you, whatever you're comfortable with. I would like for this to be completed and scanned or emailed to me at my address, published on the website by uh, Sunday uh, at 6 p.m. Well, that's it for this session. Good luck with your assignment and give attention to the reading of God's Word and to uh, Foster's text, and we'll see you here uh, with the next video.